Hi everybody, this is for Biochem 4024, and today we'll be discussing a brief aspect of competitive inhibition. Now, competitive inhibition is a really important phenomenon that happens with enzymes. And in, for example, snakes, uh, a snake's venom actually is comprised of a, lot, a variety of different inhibitors that affects uh, a lot of the neurological systems that a prey might uh, have. And for biochemists, it's really important to be able to describe what's happening to enzymes when uh, they are under the influence of inhibitors. Uh, one specific diagram that helps a lot right here is more visual based. Here we can see that the enzyme can either take one of two pathways where it binds to the substrate or it binds to the inhibitor. And when it binds to the substrate, it will immediately go to the form of a product. And remember, enzymes themselves do, are not modified when it processes substrate. The other hand, on the other hand, inhibitors, they are very structurally, structurally similar to substrates uh, in competitive inhibition. So it can easily bind to the active site of an enzyme, and therefore it can no longer process any substrate because the active site is now blocked. Uh, biochemists have another way where it, they try to describe and understand what's happening to the enzyme itself. And one of the ways is through double reciprocal plots. Double reciprocal plots uh, are basically um, graphs in which you take the Michaelis-Menten equation uh, in a linear format, which makes it easier to interpret the data. And therefore, when you put the enzymes under the influence of inhibitors, it's easy to see what happens to the enzymes. So here is an example of uh, what the Michaelis-Menten equation looks like under competitive inhibition. So in particular, um, you'll notice that it, has, it shares a lot of the same characteristics as a linear function. So you can see that this is sort of like the y equals, and this is like slope m the x plus b y-intercept. So when you're actually looking at these plots, it'll be easier to understand what's going on if you know that these this equation in particular is a linear function. So let's go ahead and just graph one real quick. You, may, you won't have to actually graph one during the exam, but I, it will help you in understanding what competitive inhibition is about and how it will actually affect the enzyme's kinetics. So let's label our axes. Our axes should be uh, matching our equation. So this would be our y, 1 over v0. And this would be 1 over our substrate. So first, let's try and draw uh, the enzyme's regular kinetics without any inhibition. The point at which this graph hits the y-axis is 1 over Vmax. How can I, how do I know for sure? Well, if we look at our equation, 1 over Vmax represents our y-intercept, or b. And so when you're graphing it, or you're looking at a graph, you know wherever the line hits the y-axis, it's 1 over Vmax. So if you get a question where you have a graph in front of you, and it has all of the com necessary components labeled, and you're asked for Vmax, well, you'll know where to look for Vmax if they've given you the value of where this line crosses. So that'll be an easy giveaway for you. Um, as far as the slope is concerned, we know the slope is going to be uh, alpha km over Vmax is our slope. And when, it, when the enzyme is not under inhibition, alpha is equal to 1. Now, what happens to the graph when, an, an, when inhibitors are involved, particularly in competitive inhibition? It'll rotate the graph. I'll put 
I for an inhibitor. And alpha will increase. One, two, three, etc. And the higher the alpha value, the stronger the, the effect of the inhibitor. And we know this to be true because if you interpret the graph, this will make sense. So let's assume we have one fixed concentration of substrate. In our normal graph, we may have um, a certain 1 over V0. But when the inhibitor is involved, how does V0 change? Does it increase, decrease, or stay the same? Well, it obviously doesn't stay the same because the graphs aren't in line with each other. But for a given substrate concentration, when you have an inhibitor, you'll notice that V0 decreases. Because if you think about it, if V0 is decreasing, then on the y-axis, this value overall increases because it's an inverse, right? So that means when you have an inhibitor involved, V0 is decreasing. That makes sense, right? Because when an inhibitor is involved, the enzyme is not increasing its speed at which it processes substrate nearly as quick. Because now every, every substrate that hits an enzyme's active site may be blocked by an inhibitor now. So the enzyme does not be able to process uh, the substrate nearly as quick, and therefore it will take a much longer or it may not even approach Vmax. But we know for sure that if, if, given, if not given enough time, but we know for sure that when you have competitive inhibition, Vmax does not change, regardless if you have a competitive inhibitor or not. And the way we can tell is because this graph stays or rotates around Vmax. It never changes. Now, there are other forms of inhibition that does change it, and we will get to that at a later point. But remember, the highlights of competitive inhibition is that it doesn't change Vmax. It modifies the slope through alpha. And alpha represents the intensity to which inhi inhibition is occurring for the enzyme. Thanks. Hope that helps.